Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I want to do some magazine image transfer with you. This is a technique that works about half the time I've found. So uh, best way to see if your magazine images are going to work is to just play around and experiment. It kind of depends on the kind of ink that the printer used. So it is kind of out of our control whether we can get a decent pool or not on some of these, but I will um, give it a try today and we'll see what we come up with. Uh, whether it's a win or a loss, we will find out together. So I have some images from National Geographic here. I have one page that is mostly text and a little bit of picture. I found this cool shark image that I thought would be neat if it works, <clears throat> excuse me, and also this space image, which may or may not work. Uh, the to get the best results, you want high contrast images. So I feel like these fit the bill. We're just gonna go ahead and see what happens. I think first we're going to do the one with the text on it. So I'm going to pick some Payne's Gray. And if I can get this open, yes, okay. So I've got my jelly plate here and I am putting down some Payne's Gray. This is what is going to print the actual text and image on this page. So let's go ahead and get the ink spread out in a nice thin layer on the plate. That looks pretty good. I'll roll off here. You can see I have little bits stuck to my roller here. I didn't do a very good job cleaning it. And that's showing up in the in the plate. And also you can see here on my roll off page, I'll need to take care of that. But for right now, we're just gonna go ahead and see what we can get out of this print. So you can see how the magazine page doesn't come completely to the ends there. That's no problem. We're just gonna take a regular sheet of, I just happen to have copy paper here. You can use newspaper, anything at all just to pick it up because we're not using that for anything we just want to get it off of the plate so first thing i'm going to do is pull that up and you can see how that cleaned that off there you can keep these and do something with them i probably will because why not we've got a sheet with some ink on it and if you hear noises in the background my cat is insane at the moment Go ahead and give this some pressure on there. I've got some wrinkles here that is probably gonna mess up the print in that spot, but I don't care because we are not going for perfection. We are just going for results. Okay. And we got a print. It's gonna be really hard for you to see. I'll take it in. Um, yeah, it's gonna be really hard. You can kind of see the text there. You can definitely see the print of the image there. We'll take you right back out. We'll give this a second to dry. And while we're doing that, I can decide what color I want to print. I think we're gonna use this seafoam craft paint that I bought. I really like this color and I like the way it looks with the Payne's Gray. So. I'm just going to give this a little bit of a shake, test that, that's still a little bit damp. So we'll go ahead and print this one, and then I think I'm going to try the shark print next. Um, we'll have to pick some interesting colors for that one, and we'll see what we can come up with here. Let's make sure this has been cleaned off. I don't want my colors to mix. So I'm actually going to do that one more time here and we'll give this guy an extra second to dry. It's still a little bit damp, but I think we'll be okay. All right, let's go ahead and spread this out on the plate over top of what we've already printed down. 
I love this seafoam green color. It is just so pretty. Of course, I've got way too much ink on there. So we'll pull some of that off so that we can get a decent print. And again, the amount of paint that you want on there, you just want to be able to start to see the image coming through, which you kind of can. And I think this looks perfect. And I'm just using regular copy paper today, nothing fancy. Just gonna try to get some prints that work out. Whoops, I definitely did not take that edge into consideration. So I wanna just clean that up with this piece here. Okay. Go ahead and give this a little bit of pressure so that we can pick up all those details. Now, anytime I'm printing text, my goal isn't to be able to read it. In fact, I would rather it not be readable. It's just, sometimes you just want the look of text and they sell stamps that will achieve that. And that's fine too. But for today's purposes, I just wanted to see what we could get off of these magazines. I'm gonna take a peek here. Okay, it's lifting very nicely. Oh yeah, look at that. Now we lost a lot of detail in this image over here. Um, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of make out the figures in there. Again, this doesn't bother me because I'm never going for super realistic. I'm always looking for something slightly abstracted. And we've got the beautiful uh, text in there too. So this would make a great background for something, a cool collage piece but I just wanted to show you the process. So let's set this one aside. Clean off my roller. Get a piece of paper towel, because sometimes that does a better job. Okay. So next we're going to print this shark. And I think we're going to use a mixture of, what do I have here? Burnt Umber, if I can get this one open. We're gonna mix some colors right on the plate. I'm gonna do Burnt Umber and Cadmium Red Medium. Because you can get a nice, like rusty color. Ooh, that's a lot of paint. No, oh, that's okay. Let's just see. Okay. You can kind of just swirl it around to mix the color. You can mix it off of the plate and then just uh, apply it with a brush or a palette knife too. That definitely works, but you don't need to do that. Oh, that's such a pretty color. I love that color. But again, way too much paint on there. So let's get rid of some of it. And I mean, look at these roll off sheets. You can do something with that. I think that's really cool looking right there. But whatever your preference is, I just like these layers. I think layers make everything a little more interesting. Let's take just a little bit more off of here. Once you start doing this more often, and I'm saying this to myself as well, you'll get a feel for how much paint to put down so you're not wasting as much. Okay, we're gonna lay our shark down. And we're gonna go back in with this pickup sheet just to clean up the edges around the magazine page. That came off nice and clean. Let's 
give him a minute here to transfer everything over. And let's check it out and see if it's ready. Yes. The text is coming up nice. Are we gonna get the shark? Ooh, we did. That turned out really cool. So I'm gonna let this dry for a minute or two here. And I think we're gonna pick that up when it's ready with this ivory color. But while we're waiting for that to dry, I did wanna talk for a minute about these magazines. So if you are doing this just for your own use, to make something just, just to do it, just for the process of it, or uh, like a cool activity or something to hang in your own home, these are great. Use the magazines, test it out. But keep in mind that these images belong to somebody, they're not really yours. So if you're looking to make work that you are going to put in a gallery or possibly sell, you're not gonna wanna use magazine images because they don't belong to you. But I'm gonna talk about in another video uh, what you can use, which is um, laser copy prints. So you can do transfers off of laser copy prints and you can use your own photographs taken off of your phone or there is a website called um, Upsplash. I'm sorry, Unsplash. I always say that wrong. But it has free copyright, copyright free images on there and people put them on there for your use. You can do whatever you want with them. And um, it's pretty easy. You just sign up for a free account on there, download the images to your phone, and then you have them. And um, I'll talk about this a little bit more in the next video, but just wanted to mention that while we're waiting for this to dry, that's something to keep in mind. Okay, that is pretty well dry. I wanna just make sure this is nice and cleaned off. The colors can mix a little bit, it's not gonna matter, but I'd rather that they didn't mix too much. Okay. So I'm gonna give this a shake here. I'm gonna have fingerprints all through it, but that's all right. And I don't know if you can tell yet, but the text came out really nice down here. I'm gonna start down here. Okay. Let's brayer this out. It is mixing a little bit, but that's okay. I'm impatient and I didn't want to wait for it to dry the whole way. But I actually kind of like the variation of color that we're getting in there. And I can tell it's not going to mess up the original image of the shark there. So it's gonna work out just fine. You can see actually from, I'm cleaning this off on a piece of paper towel and we're getting some of the texture from the towel because it transferred onto the brayer, which I don't mind, but um, if that is something that you don't like, then by all means, just use a regular sheet of copy paper. All right, that looks good. Let's see if I can do a better job of placing this. Okay, this should be just about ready to pull. Yep, it's coming up nicely. You can see how the text transferred as I'm lifting it. And we've got a shark. That turned out pretty neat. Bring it up so you can kind of see it a little bit better. All right. I'll get another roll off sheet here and get this pink color off of there. Next up, I'm going to do that space looking piece that I got out of the National Geographic. I'm trying to think of what color I want to use for that. I think maybe we're going to go with a blue. 
pardon me while I rummage through my paint box over here. Here it is. I want to use this um, Prussian blue. So I'll go ahead and get some of that on the plate. And you know what? Just to change it up and make it kind of interesting, I'm going to put a couple dots of this seafoam on there too. And I, I know I'm putting way too much paint on here, but that's all right. Okay, let's see what happens. Ooh, very pretty color. Way too much paint. In fact, we're gonna get some of that off of there already. One of these days I will learn how much paint to use. But until then, we will just keep doing it this way and brayering it off until we get the right consistency. I get so distracted thinking about 10 other things while I'm doing this that I don't actually pay attention to what I'm putting down on there and then I've got like a gallon of paint that I don't need. But if you have too much, it won't pick up the print because I mean, for one reason is it's going to just stay wet for way too long. See what we can get to print off of there. Okay, let's clean up the edges. I'm actually going to save this piece because I love these elephants and I'm going to see if I can get a print of those. I don't know if we're going to be able to because um, it might be too dark. Oh look, that turned out so cool. But I'm going to set this over here and we'll give that a try too just to see. Here's a reminder of what the original image looked like. And it did a pretty good job of picking everything up there. Now this is definitely going to be wet for a minute. So let's think about what we want to pick that up with. I'm thinking maybe either yellow ochre or um, I think this is cadmium yellow. Mm. Let's go, let's go with this one. While we're waiting for that to dry, I just want to go in and really clean this off. Because I don't necessarily want those colors to mix. I'm gonna peel some of this paint off of here while we're doing that. You can just run these underwater too every time you're done using them so that you won't get paint filled up on them. After a while though, if you don't ever clean them and um ask me how I know, you will be able to just go in and just peel sheets of paint off because I mean the acrylic paint, paint is just basically plastic and it will peel off in little plastic sheets over time. Oops. How are you doing? I feel like that's going to take a while to dry. It looks pretty good. It's kind of wet in certain areas. I'm gonna just go old school and try to dry it a little bit like that. If you're in a super big hurry, you can use um, a hair dryer on cool setting, but I didn't bother to bring it to the studio right now. So we're gonna just, okay, that's good, okay. I'm gonna give this yellow a shake here and let's see what happens. I'm going to try to not put a whole bunch of paint on there this time. It's such a pretty yellow. I love yellow. I use it in my work a lot. There were several years where almost all of my paintings were some shade of yellow or another. I just, I don't know, such a bright color, which is 
Interestingly enough, very atypical from anything I would wear. I don't like bright colors, but in my art, I just love them. Okay, this is perfect. I can very easily see the image through here. Let's get our pickup sheet. Whoops. that another second you can kind of take a peek and if it's not really picking it up enough for you just go ahead and lay that sheet back down and continue to give it another minute or two I think we're gonna call that good oh yeah that, that got the rest of it oh this is neat Wow, that really picked up the text beautifully. Oh, this whole image, check this out. Check that out, that turned out so cool. And here's the, here's the original, which obviously is gonna be skewed a little bit because of the blue paint on it that we used, but that transferred so beautifully. I mean, you really have all of the detail you can see the text there at the bottom. So you can see what kind of potential these would have for collage or for backgrounds, or if you like to make your own gift wrap, any of that stuff, um, these are really good for. I'm just gonna go ahead and do one more just to kind of see if we can get this elephant print to pick up. I don't know that it's gonna work, but we will give it a try. I'm gonna use Burnt Umber, and I think we're gonna try to pick it up with that yellow again, because I really liked that. Did a little bit of a better job of not using way too much paint. I'm still gonna roll off a little bit here. But we've got a pretty good thin layer Just lay him down. Clean up the edges. If you have another clean brayer, you can use that to apply the pressure. I sometimes do, more often than not though, I just use my hands. I like to be hands-on and involved in what I'm doing all the time and just get a better feel for it. Let's see, well, the text picked up. And I'm thinking the elephants didn't really pick up that well. But we'll see when we print it, we'll see what happens. Give this a little bit of a breeze. Then I'm gonna pick that up with the yellow again. We'll see what we got. And that should do it for today. But like I said, stop in and check out the next video because um, we're gonna do the laser transfer, which works really well and looks really cool. And then I'm gonna show you, or actually I'm gonna talk about in the next video, doing some t-shirt printing from that. And we will do a whole separate video on that. I haven't tried it yet, but I've seen other artists do it and it seems to work. And I think it would be really cool to be able to print your own t-shirts. All right, let's take this on down. See if we can get any kind of elephant off of there. Sure, kind of, I can see a little bit of it, but I don't know that it's going to be detailed enough to really be able to tell exactly what it is. But let's give her a shot. Here. 
a second. Oops. All right. We've got text and not really, not really an elephant. So you can see right there, you've got some of the details from the trunk, but definitely if you didn't know what you were looking at, there's an eye there, you, you wouldn't be able to tell. So I think it's just because it was not a, the image wasn't in contrast enough. And like I said, those definitely work better. I mean, look at the, look at how the text turned out. That was very light on very dark and that came out very clearly. But I just wanted to give it a try and see what I could make happen. So just to go over real quick here, I think this was probably one of the most successful images that we got today, although I really do like the way the shark turned out. That color combo is really pretty. And then we got a lot of good text with the Payne's Gray and the sea foam. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for stopping in and check out my next one. It's going to be all on laser print transfers and you're not going to want to miss it. Have a great day.